following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 725-1044. Now, Dave. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we love to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today? Well, uh, we were down to uh, a little... Uh, around 2,800 on the S&P cash. We're up 15 points higher than that. Still off 66 points. Uh, Dow, of course, got down to its 700 some odd point, which is about a three standard deviation move. That 750 number has been kind of constant in a while for uh, Dow to be blown apart. Also signals that you might have a low today that if retested could be a low. I uh, always liked uh, Tim Ord, who said, a low is not a low until it's been retested. And I didn't like it on Friday. Uh, we talked about it on Tom show about how Richard Wyckoff uh, would call it an automatic rally. That was one without any preparation or test. And that uh, why some of those continued on, it was much more wiser to look for a test. Now, maybe we close back over the low of the next few days, but I still suspect that there were a ton of folks on margin. And I sus that suspect makes me almost always look at these lows as something as a three-day event. That is, uh, they have three days to cover. The market, uh, if you're drowning, uh, the sharks on Wall Street were more than glad to toss you an anvil. But they're not going to toss you a life ring. They're going to toss you an anvil. Uh, so best to wait till probably at least Wednesday. Now, if you've never been through a margin call, you probably ought to check it out. Not if you're on margin, but uh, if you uh, want to understand how others on margin will react. Uh, up at the high, it was a euphoric high, not a lot of volume. Generally, the kind of conditions where everybody just thinks, well, everything's going to the moon and they do start using margin. Um, there are a couple of uh, psychological issues with people buying margin, uh, and it almost always happens at the top, and that is you get diminishing returns. You're used to making all this money, and the only way to do it is put more risk on, and you kind of look at it, you go, you know what? I could go margin. This is gone. Everything's going to the moon. We're going to get this trade deal. Everything's going to the moon. Earnings are great. Everything's going to the moon. And you only have to be kind of a dopey trader that way a few times, but there's always some there. And to tell you the truth, there are people that should know a great deal better in the market that are probably going to be facing margin calls. Maybe I'll talk about that next week. I want some evidence that it actually happened. Just not rumors, rumors of rumors, uh, but uh, you can see it. Anyway, uh, off 65 now, of course, we want to talk about the volume in the markets today. And, you know, you would think that we'd have a lot more in the way of super blowout volume today. Not as bad as one would think. Uh, about uh, 4.8 billion shares, still enough uh, to keep this market going down. I suspect that uh, we could have a little bounce maybe Thursday or Friday uh, on maybe some a little better news. But there are a handful of things going on uh, that make me think uh, that we're going to probably be selling off into the three-day weekend for Memorial Day. Uh, the first one of that is the elections in, in, uh, in uh, the U.K. Uh, for the euro. Uh, things are dramatically going uh, the way of other folks other than Theresa May, she's, I'd say, 95% chance she's done. Uh, and uh, the, the people that have been the naysayers, kind of the people that started warning about Hitler in 1932 and everybody uh, yeah, yeah, them, uh, called him a, uh, a 
warmonger, all the other stuff. He had to wait about six years. Uh, and then everybody figured out what he knew already. Uh, I think there are a lot of people that are probably going to come to power out of this that uh, are not as dopey uh, as people that want to stand in the middle of the road. Uh, politically, only one thing happens. That is, you're going to get run over. Um, you, you pretty much need to pick your side uh, and pick your poison on that. So anyway, I suspect that that puts a little bit more pressure on world markets and unknowns. And eventually we're going to get down to where this trade war thing uh, finds a bottom. I think that's going to be fairly quickly. Uh, markets kind of take a sinusoidal path higher and a linear path lower. And that means it happens in a really short span. I don't think this is the end of the world. I don't think this is the end of the, uh, end of the United States. Um, I know if you listen to Cable Pravda, um, several of the cable stations that uh, supposedly say that they are news stations, um, just a kind of a, another opportunity to go take a swing at people that they dislike. Uh, and uh, why uh, everybody, or at least half the nation, is stupid and they're smart. You should just listen to them because they're um, anointed by the other people that are anointed. Um, doesn't make them wise. Um, and we can go back to World War II again and why uh, people uh, poo-pooed anybody standing up to Hitler when it would have mattered, when it could have been something small. So I'm always a... Uh, a fan of people that uh, don't appease and don't uh, capitulate in the face of uh, evil raising its head, whether it's in the Europe or the United States or around the globe. Uh, it generally, historically, works out very good for the markets. And uh, I think now that the uh, Chinese know that probably we're serious, uh, that uh, things will probably actually go along a little bit better. But uh, as I said a month ago and the month before that, don't expect this to happen overnight. It may take an entire year. Uh, in the meantime, um, you're going to have some short-term displacement. Long-term, we're going to see more people that are probably making things here in the United States or making them in countries that probably are far less aggressive uh, to us in the future. So I think it's kind of, although it would have been better if we would have made a deal right now, I think it's probably still a good deal. When we talk about Apple, which we'll get in today, today also, uh, is uh, uh, a lot of people uh, saying, well, it's going to be a big problem. Well, Apple never sold much in China to begin with. And over a year ago, they started moving a great deal of the production uh, into India. So I think a lot of the stuff's overblown, much like uh, the problems in the Gulf uh, on oil, where they've, uh, for now, almost seven years, had uh, pipelines to take it around the isthmus of uh, Oman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's Oman. Um, a lot of these things have already been cut off at the pass. I think a lot of people are kind of living in the past on a lot of these things. We'll be back after this. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back uh, experiencing rather some severe weather right now in clear water and uh, heavy winds and lightning and thunder and rain and all that. So if we lose you, just know that it uh, wasn't the man trying to keep us down. It was Mr. Weather. But uh, next we shall move on. Uh, as always, history doesn't exactly repeat, but it does rhyme. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1607, some 100 English colonists arrive along the west bank of James River in Virginia to found Jamestown, the first permanent English settlement in North America, dispatched from England by the London Company. The colonists had sailed across the Atlantic aboard the Susan Constant, Godspeed, and Discovery. In December of that same year, John Smith and two other colonists were captured by the Algonquin Indians while searching for provisions in the Virginia wilderness. His companions were killed but he was spared, according to the later account by Smith, because of the intercession of Pocahontas, Chief uh, Powhatan's daughter. I guess that's how it's pronounced. Anyway, she had the hots for him. He was kind of, I guess, a good-looking guy. And uh, eh, she let him off uh, and why he lived. But uh, eh, things were kind of rough and tumble back in those days. On uh, 1607, when they got the first permanent start. Uh, other things going on in the market, as we said, we wanted to get to charts fairly quickly today, uh, and we'll take a look at them. Um, a lot of stuff starting to have its first test of the lows. Some of the stocks that have already been blown apart, um, not getting the kind of volume that you think that they might to blow out their lows. Uh, Office Depot, not a great stock, two-buck stock, but uh, you know what? Uh, a little less than 5 million shares so far today, going into a 30 million share low of December 21st. Um, eventually, everything uh, going down eventually stops, whether it's zero or less or, or a little more than zero. But we see that in some of the stuff that I'm looking at. Um, there was a question during the break, and of course, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, and we'll be glad to talk about it. Uh, to, 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 uh, we had some more questions. 
Okay, got that, got that, uh, got that, okay. Um, given your mo uh, uh, monitoring of options and volume, do you see any risk of an accelerated selling into 4 p.m.? Um, I was gonna, actually, that goes into the other thing, which I was talking about uh, where you want to watch, and that is margin calls. I suspect that a great deal of people or wishful thinkers, even the smart people uh, in the hedge funds, uh, and we're probably charging uh, uh, the highs with margin to try to make money on that on the diminishing returns. So for me, again, I would be very wary in these conditions uh, where it came off of uh, 29.45 or whatever so quickly down 150 points. Normally, probably not a big deal. And in historically, not a big deal. But guess what? When you get to the point where you're fighting over for a percent or two and you're trying to justify your uh, hedge fund, people continue to do stupid things. And I suspect that we probably had some decent margin on it. I think we get those margin numbers this week. Uh, and I think that they're going to show some continuous. I'm going to try to look at them during the break because uh, they are available from FINRA and see whether or not uh, I can see anything. I just, one of the things I didn't get around to, I need to get a, one of those round to -its. I got one as a kid. I don't know where it is. It looked like a, a dog treat, but it was hard. And it just said a round to it on it. So you could, anytime you got around to it, you had to do it, uh, which I did not like growing up. Uh, what else do we have? I've got a bunch of stuff going on. Anyway, uh, the first thing uh, that we're looking at is how the market closes today. I would not get excited. Like I said, I suspect just from the way that people were acting uh, going into those recent highs uh, that they were rather euphoric and in euphoric uh, levels, they tend to throw a lot of margin on and uh, the market almost never lets anybody out on the wrong side of the market for uh, and quicker than three days. So ideally, if you were the most bullish person in the world and you think that me even thinking that the low uh, has to come a lot sooner than later and not me like thinking kind of the end of the month um, or at least the, the good buy in it, um, I think all you can probably hope for is a good bounce. Uh, but again, still think that it's going to take three days uh, to wash the worst of the excesses in the market out. Always remember that song. I don't know what's, what play it was from, but it was always, you, I'm going to wash that man right out of my hair. And I think you kind of have to watch the excesses of the market. Man, what a tortured analogy that was. Uh, you got to wash the excesses out of the uh, market uh, and it takes a handful of days, and generally it takes people throwing you out of a bad position on Wall Street, and that is what margin calls are all about. The day that you're told <laughs> you're wrong, and you not only were you wrong, but you stayed wrong uh, until we had to throw you out of the market. Uh, like uh, Valentine and uh, what was the – I can't remember the guy's name in the movie now. Uh, Valentine and uh, – yeah, I'll think of it. Uh, the two guys in trading places that got finally tossed off the board because of their margin calls. Uh, but we'll think it. Uh, was South Pacific? I don't know. I'm not a big fan of plays. I just remember hearing the song. And uh, But uh, plays are like movies, except they're boring, right? That's what I'm thinking. Mortimer and Valentine, yeah. Um, so we'll see that. Anyway, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, taking a look at uh, Walgreens, Boots Alliance, WBA is the symbol for Wayne in Dallas. Uh, well, let's go back and see if we see anything more. I don't see anything out here that says a bottom. And again, uh, if you're trying to play this, the thing would almost be that you're looking for the third leg down for this to make, to hit 60 bucks and then finish the last ABC. You got two big gaps already you're probably going to get a third on the downside of it i don't see where this actually looks any good to buy i don't know whether or not you work at the company or, or at it but i mean 
there's a lot of companies that are probably already tested lows on lighter volume. In fact, we can probably look at a couple of those before today. Uh, these, at best, maybe go fill half these gaps. And maybe that's enough money for you. And actually, this one might be okay if it got to 58 bucks. Uh, but from 52 to 58, maybe a nice trading range. I just don't like the risk in a market that's iffy already. I'd rather have a stock that told me it got to its low, couldn't find any more sellers, and then that was it. Give me a call at 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, put a message in the den. of least resistance is david white's daily trading newsletter and if you're looking for active trading ideas then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service david uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his path of least resistance newsletter using a combination of equity trades along with options david keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then and head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And uh, when you're down this much, uh, bounce, although on any given day, would seem to be okay. I mean, we're 17 points off the lows on the S&P 500, but we're still off 64 points on the day, still off 585 points on the day on the Dow, still off 234 points on the NASDAQ. Uh, depends on what time frame you're, you're looking at. As I said, I don't think that there's a great deal uh, to be had by trading equities. Uh, if you're trading on five-minute bars, that's one thing. I think you've got probably a pretty good option, or at least I do, uh, for uh, calls coming Thursday or Friday. Uh, but you, there's pretty thin window for those, pretty 
it's not open very often and you have to kind of get in it and get out of it uh but uh i think that there is an opportunity for some fairly decent uh white lightning uh, again maybe we get up uh, i don't know 30 40 50 points higher in the s p and then kind of give it all back on light volume uh going into the three-day weekend that would be my uh ideal spot of having a market that did exactly what it was supposed to do uh to shake out the uh the weak hands and get ready for yet another try for higher prices um but uh like i said it's uh you either want to trade very uh in very short time spans now or you want to think about a long-term play when the signal does erupt but it may not be here for a little while Again, you can give me a uh, call at 877-927-6648. Um, Al sent me a nice link for the geopolitics uh, oil. I went through this like, I don't know, in 2016 um, when everything was kind of put together and looked at it again. And it looks to me like they can still ship 80%, if not 100% of their oil through the pipelines and avoid uh, that. Now, the question would be whether or not uh, Iran would deliberately attack uh, the Saudis and I think they would probably be fairly upset at the results of that we've got a lot of uh, F-35s parked in Israel now uh, with probably little or no chance of them being uh, discovered or shown up on radar uh, would make pretty sh uh, short work of a lot of stuff going on there may be some higher prices to pay to get involved in that but i don't think they come out the victors in any way maybe they just think that they are because it costs us something or others something but um they've thought for a while that if they could just get nuclear weapons uh that would be it and of course if you're a fan of world war ii i don't know if a fan's a really good way to look at it um if you uh were a historian and uh, you looked at uh mein kampf um, you saw exactly what they said they were going to do. And uh, at least the uh, people that run Iran right now have uh, said exactly what they're going to do. And it's not that much different than Hitler said. Uh, first of all, we got to kill all the Jews. Uh, pretty standard uh, refrain from those guys. So uh, the question is, what happens over there? Do we let it spin out of control? Do we get in and, uh, and kind of the buzzword since Second World War is to make sure that uh, while we have more wars, we keep them small. Let's so let them spin out of control into a world war. And uh, yeah, been at least a policy, maybe not the perfect policy, but certainly better than the policy of uh, yeah, leading up to Second World War. Uh, what else do we have that we want to take a quick look at? Gold finally starting to move. Got a quick question on that. Um, again, gold tends to sell off with the market. Uh, what you were looking for is some kind of sign of strength in gold. Generally, after you started to find a bottom, that's where everybody starts really piling into gold. Why it's, uh, the market is really being hammered, uh, it tends to lag. Um, most people think instantly everybody buys gold, but it does tend to lag a little bit. Uh, you're now back into this gap down on the 11th of April. Came down with almost 12 million shares. Back into it today with the 6.4 million shares. So not showing a lot of strength just yet. Uh, you might need a little bit more consolidation. But when we do find some kind of low, uh, the next move in gold probably should be able to get through that uh, if it doesn't fall apart before. Uh, to, 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 what else did we look at? GLW. Uh, which is corning. Um, oh, I wanted to talk about Apple, which is the reason that I looked at this before. Of course, they make all the Gorilla Glass. Uh, to, 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 to see. I've got okay. Um, I don't think there's anything uh, other stopping this down into the 28s and 27s. Uh, and again, I'm just kind of surprised that uh, this thing has done as well as it has, and people haven't gotten around the patents yet on it or made new technology. And certainly the uh, fold from Samsung while delayed shows you that there may be a, uh, a kind of another technology that would hurt Corning going forward since this is a huge amount of their 
uh, income are the uh, glass screens and uh, the other half of it's kind of uh, uh, flexible uh, fiber optic cable, which is still a big part of it. But uh, this thing could probably go back to 20 bucks if they found a reasonable uh, replacement for Gorilla Glass. Uh, oh, we were going to talk about Apple. Uh, as I said, Apple started over a year ago moving uh, with Foxconn, moving its production out of uh, China. Now, I think the downside was that they were kind of, Apple was kind of dopey and said that they were going to be able to, to sell a huge amount of iPhones in China. Um, I've always been a skeptic. Anybody's listened to the shows for years, I know. I, I tell people that companies go to China to die and throw away lots of money because basically they don't cotton to you making lots of money off of their citizens. Uh, and they kind of think it's an us against them uh, philosophy. Uh, and two, uh, they know that a lot of times people are more than willing to, to uh, listen to the big lie of the big payoff only uh, to make sure and get all the intellectual property and then throw you out of the country and start making their own stuff. Uh, we've seen Qualcomm go through that. Other companies do it too. Um, it's a quagmire. It's kind of like a land war in Asia and uh, trying to run your business in China uh, as uh, somebody from another country, not a good thing to do. Uh, but certainly uh, you're back at least at the last level of support. What I would say, though, is that um, I'm not. I, I kind of figure that from what I hear, everybody's thinking about uh, the problem with uh, building the phones. And from what I can tell and read, at least, it's not as big a problem as most people would think now that it's going to be mostly done in India. Uh, again, I guess you could, it's hard to separate the two, uh, but. Uh, it may be a little overdone. Eh, just a thought out there. Uh, but I thought it was overdone to the upside, too. Uh, that, especially that last gap that gave it all up, uh, which is, uh, um, again, when we talk about how these things close below the 3x3 three three and then everything falls apart. Uh, but you certainly got that on the 7th here. Then you see the real price destruction come in. We'll be back in a short minute. Email me at pathpfnn.com. Give me a call. I'm lonely. Like Maytag Fairman. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. We're still off 64 points on the S&P cash, still down 573 points on the Dow. The Nasdaq's off 240, and uh, the Russell's off 43. And uh, I don't think I want to be long going into the close today. Again, we've talked about the reasons why. I, I think you need at least a couple of days for this to settle out. If you want to be trading, you're probably uh, trading for 10, maybe 15 points on the S&P cash, and then you're in and you're out, both up on the upside and downside, you never know when that message or news is going to hit. And we kind of need to let that kind of settle out and get out of the marketplace. But uh, I still see far too many people uh, uh, that are uh, not um, of the mind to capitulate on their long positions uh, that still say everything's going back to the high. Uh, pretty good sign that a low is in is that you get pretty much capitulation, not a call to buy at every point down uh, as a big victory that it's down, you know, 10 bucks or 12 bucks and it bounces too and suddenly you're uh, infinitely rich. But that's, uh, I've been looking at some of the stock boards today and that's kind of what you get. You get a sense of these people all believing that they're still long, that the market or at least their stock can't go any lower. And generally when they shut up, and quit telling everybody that kind of horse bucky. Um, that's generally where you're fairly close. When they can't defend the indefensible anymore, that's generally where you find a low. And I see far too many people saying that uh, they can defend the uh, indefensible. Um, there's one stock I'm watching that's down like 30% in the last few months. And everybody's still, oh, it's going to the moon. Still going to the moon. Um, I don't, you know, when you can, re you can reject reality for so long, but that's why I suspect that we have a lot of those margin calls coming. I think these, a lot of these people are just praying that it doesn't go any lower. And generally, when you pray, um, well, he said that there's no, no crying, crying in baseball. And uh, whatever that movie was about the girls playing baseball, well, there's no hope uh, and wishing in the market. Generally, when you do that, eh, it goes against you. Not a good thing. I uh, wanted to look at a few other stocks uh, into it, and we'll look at Intel next for Jerry. Um, you know, there's not some, I mean, there's some patterns that don't look all that bad. You had a big update on Intuit on the 22nd of February. That was up on 3.2 million shares. Uh, today, you're down on about 800,000 shares. Uh, now, it may still get a little lower down here about this 320 level, which is a gap that is still unfilled from the 15th of February. Uh, but so far, uh, you had one really big volume day on the downside, and it's kind of knocked off since then. That's why I'm thinking that you can probably get more than just an automatic rally, uh, maybe one that lasts two or three days, and then start seeing people sell off into the long three-day weekend. Uh, Intel, as we discussed last week, I did not like at all. I still dislike it. It is filling the gap. So technically, you've got something to look at, uh, but uh, you wanted to see this gap down at 32, 33 million shares uh, back on the 3rd of January. 
Uh, and you want to see that volume all kind of come out. Now, on Friday, you had 42 million shares as you got into it. Uh, today, you got 26 million shares. It's a little less, uh, but you've got three more gaps down to about 41. Um, and I'm fairly bearish on this. I suspect that $40 mark does get hit in Intel fairly soon. Uh, to, 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 what else do we have? Okay. Uh, question about the IYT. Da, 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 da. Okay. Is this going to come back with the market from... I forgot. Okay, let's take a quick look at this. Well, you bounced up through the gap higher. That gap was on uh, April 1st. Uh, at uh, about 191, got up to 200 bucks, uh, closed below it. Now you've got the right side of the chart coming over here. Um, you know, this is probably actually a fairly good business to be in uh, under tariffs as more and more things happen here in the United States. Um, transportation is going to be more important. Uh, again, it's not going to be tomorrow, and it's not going to be in five minutes. I'm talking about taking and looking at some of these things and having them make good technical uh, 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 signals uh, in maybe a week or so. But, you know, back here on the 25th of March, uh, what was the close at here? 180? Um, you know, if you got a lot of light volume back here at 180 and the volume all disappeared out here, I think you could have some fairly decent trades out here with good risk reward, but it's going to take a little bit longer. Um, do, 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 what else do we have? Oh, yeah, keep bouncing around here. Uh, now we're only off 63 points on the S&P cash, but it certainly looks like we're finding sellers uh, every time we get up to about 28.18 on the S&P cash. We shall see. Uh, some of the other stocks that have blown apart. Um, I took a shot at Adobe uh, a little while ago and ended up eh, not having a, um, I can ever type it correctly. Um, this thing since about 260 has had absolutely no juice. So I assume that's where it's going to go back to. Um, but again, um, now that we've had some of these stocks give us the big signal, you're looking for them to come back to where they started the no-volume move. And that's about uh, 258, 260 on Adobe, but that went up on nothing but nothing but hot air, even after a very bad earnings call, since I listened to it. Got up to 291.70. So, uh, again, you're going to have... You're not going to have the easy road we had before. It's going to take a lot to grind through these highs. It may even take all summer to take uh, grind through these highs and then see the real big moves come uh, later in the summer or maybe in September next year when things move around. Uh, question to look at uh, Microsoft, MSFT. I spent a lot of time uh, with Microsoft this weekend looking and seeing what was new from them and some of the things that can make better models uh, for me and my trading uh, to let me understand more and probably take out a little of the decision-making on myself and put it more into rules. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, you've, you're on the downside of this thing. What you need is a solid close back above a 3x3 three three displaced moving average. That's about 125 right now. Uh, you could put a nine-day on there, probably fairly close to the same thing. But until you actually bust back above that, I'm not going to say that you've seen any kind of low in Microsoft. But uh, you probably, at this point, want to uh, make sure that you got a pretty clear and vibrant signal. You don't want anything hazy. A lot of stocks in the market don't need to be running after this particular one although it probably will be the first one people go after. Uh, we will come back in just a minute and wrap the show up. Still have plenty of time to call 877-927-6648.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And, uh, and we're just off uh, 58 points and only 538 points on the Dow. Only 227 points lower on the NASDAQ. Russell's only 43 points lower. Um, and again, you know, that's kind of a backdrop of uh, the dollar, which is only down, well, it's not even down anything, basically flat at 97.12. Uh, so you don't have much going there. Uh, volume has gone up to 5.4 billion shares. So we're probably going to do seven and a half, maybe eight billion shares today, which is still good better than a lot of those low volume pushes to the high, uh, but not any kind of blowout volume at the low that makes me think we've put in a low. Uh, we continue to see very light uh, buying of VIX uh, puts or stocks uh, or options out of the money on the S&P 500, which is generally uh, a sign that everybody's gone bearish and the market's ready to bounce. Um, I haven't seen that much today, uh, but uh, certainly didn't see it on Friday which is, I, I suspect, another reason why we gapped straight down uh, today is that you want some bearishness in the market. Generally, when those people make the wrong decision, it's time to actually move higher in the markets. I still haven't seen any of that. Maybe we'll see something. But uh, like I said, I think we could still play around here for a day or two in the uh, lower part of the market. Now, maybe we get some kind of news that changes everything. Uh, but... I don't see how you can actually, seems more like gambling 
than prudent speculation to go after it. Um, I'm thinking that we've got a fairly good opportunity for a couple of day bounce, but that's probably about it. Then we probably sell into Memorial Weekend, short of any kind of capitulation on the Chinese and setting up a good trade deal, uh, which I don't think is going to happen that quick. Uh, elections to 23rd in the UK. And of course, uh, the G20 meeting isn't until the end of June, but that is the next time that uh, uh, President Trump and uh, the president of China meet. It may take that to get things back on track. So when you can, not when you have to, we'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Thank you.